Let's do a demonstration of the uh, forward difference quotient, backward difference quotient, central difference quotient homework. I like to give all my homeworks a chapter label, like is this from chapter 1.6 or 9.2 or whatever. This one isn't in the book at all, so I've given it a fake chapter of 99, and it's the first one of these, so it's 99.1. So uh, we're going to be exercising some Excel skills. We'll be making forward difference back and backward difference quotient, central difference quotient. but Another skill is just making a table of data in Excel based on a, a mathematical function. So for this demonstration part, we're going to make a table of log x, natural log of x, starting at point 0.1, going by steps of point 0.1 up to 5. So I've got x equals point 0.1 and point 0.2. That's my steps of point 0.1. So I'm going to highlight both of those and then grab the fill handle here and pull it down. And can you see it's uh, right near my cursor is the number that would be the last number if I let go right now. So that's counting up three, four, five. Oh, I want it to be five, so I'm going to stop it there. It doesn't really matter for this homework whether you're exactly on the nose with how far you go, but sometimes it's nice to be precise. Now here I want to say take the log of this number and put it here. And you might think I'd type equals ln of x like that. But if I do that, then hit enter, it says name. I don't know. What, what is this? And it knows what ln is, but it doesn't know what x is. Uh, Excel doesn't really have a sense of a variable name. What I need to do instead of x is say, what cell do I want to get the number from? So here I want to get it from this cell. So I just clicked on that cell. You could type the b15 if you want to, but I think it's less error prone to click on the cell itself. So a uh, log of a number less than one is negative, so I think I did that correctly. Uh, and then I'm going to double click to fill down here and scroll down and that went as far as the column next to it. So that's looking pretty good. And then I want to uh, compute the rate of change of this uh, using backward difference, forward difference, central difference quotient. Um, I think in one of the previous videos we started with forward and then we did backward. But here, since it, the column labels are already here, I better start by doing backward. Backward, if I tried it here, would start with this row and look backward here, and there's no numbers there. So I really can't have anything here. So I have to say current y value minus previous y value divided by current x value minus previous x value. And I always have to have those parentheses to compute the numerator and denominator first before I divide them. And then I'm going to double click the fill handle to fill down. And for difference quotient, I can do next y value minus current y value divided by next x value minus current x value. And double click to fill down. And central difference quotient, you can't really have one if you only have one of the two. So I'll skip that cell and say equals average the forward and backward difference, and fill that down. And now here I was careful to say, well, I can't have this on this row, so I'm just going to leave a blank and the same thing here. But let's go see the bottom of the data set. Does that formula make sense? Well, yeah, it's using numbers that make sense over here. This formula, though, is using blank cells. That doesn't make any sense at all. So we will click, uh, hit the delete key, and again, this one, you can take the average of one number, but I wouldn't call it a central difference quotient, so I'll just delete that. And then I'm going to click here and drag up, and then insert a scatter plot dots with connecting straight lines. And so here's my curve of natural log. Uh, that looks like the curve of natural log to me, so that's good news. I did that correctly. Um, and then here's the graph of my difference quotients. Um, and the uh, remember difference quotients are kind of the slope from one dot to the next. And here the slope is positive and fairly strong. And I've got fairly positive strong values for the difference quotients here. Over here the slope is positive but not as strong. Things are still increasing but not as quickly. And the values I have over here are positive, but not as positive as they were over here. So this is making sense. And then it says, um, what do you notice about the shape of the forward and backward difference plots? Uh, well, these curves are not flat. They're not linear. 
Are they parabolic? Well, they do decrease, but they don't really show much hint of increasing. Are they sinusoidal? No, I don't see any evidence of a wave there. Are they exponential? Well, they might be exponential decay. Are they logistic? We haven't even talked about logistic yet, but it's kind of S-shaped. Uh, I don't see any S-shape going on there. They might be exponential. Um, they might be exponential decay. Uh, if you think back to your algebra classes, they might be like uh, 1 over x. That had that kind of that decaying look to it. Um, or 1 over x squared. Uh, it's hard to say by i. So I'm not looking for extreme precision in your answers here, um, but just kind of general, what does it kind of look like? So that's my demonstration of using natural log. Uh, in the homework, you're going to be doing this for x squared, again for x cubed, again for e to the x, uh, e to the negative x actually, and again for sine, and again for another sine, but with a frequency term of three. Uh, and then, um, We'll be using the USA population stuff. Um, we won't be using, we won't be making data using a formula like we were doing, like we'll be doing here. Uh, but it's just a chance to practice backward, forward, and central difference on a data set, like I showed in another video. One important thing to know about uh, the e to the x thing is that in Excel, you use exp parentheses x instead of e caret x, like e to the power of x. Um, for example, e to the 3, let's say, is exp3, not if I do e caret 3, it just doesn't know what I mean. So to do e to a power, you do exp and put the power you want in parentheses. All right, so uh, go ahead and do that homework.